Ross Kerber is with us to talk about the story du jour, big time, President CEO of Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Your friend Elon Musk broke some news last night. Um, new CEO for Twitter. What are you thinking here? Oh, man, I was so excited, Nicole. I mean, I've been pushing for this since day one of when he took over yeah. Twitter. And not only did he find a CEO, he found a great CEO. And like, what a coup for, uh, you know, Twitter to, to steal NBCU's, you know, top head of advertising. And, you know, she's just an excellent, you know, executive. And and I think will be in incredibly complimentary to Elon's skill set and is exactly the type of person he needs to get not only advertisers back to Twitter, but give him more time to focus on Tesla as it goes through this crucially important time yeah. for the company. Yeah, Linda Yaccarino is her name. And uh, yesterday there was a she reference. And today he confirmed that this is who the new CEO will be. So I guess we got to wait a month plus until she actually takes over the role. But as you said, you were pretty happy about it. And I think that was a reflection of all Tesla shareholders, because we did see Tesla move higher, though today it's pulling back. We know that he's also raising prices on Tesla. Um, what does this mean for Tesla? Where do you think, Te you always were a Tesla fan and an Elon Musk fan. Um, do you see Tesla going higher from the current levels? It's at 167 today. Where is it headed and why? Well, I think Tesla's story is a little bit less about Elon having a little bit more time with Tesla and a little bit more about the fact that they started raising prices in the car and, you know, where the car price goes, so goes the stock. So if Elon continues to have to lower the car prices and margins, the stock can't go higher. And if Elon's able to keep prices steady or even increase prices, that gives a bottom in pricing for Teslas and margins. And it gives investors, I think, a little bit more confidence to buy the stock that they're not going to miss earnings over the next several quarters. But ultimately, the main catalyst for Tesla is launching a new product, and that's the Cybertruck. And the sooner that happens, the better. And that's what all eyes are on for Tesla. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about the back and forth of lowering the prices, raising the prices? Um, when does that become frustrating for shoppers? Well, it became frustrating for shoppers the first day he lowered the prices because he lowered them dramatically after a lot of people bought cars in Q4. And, and many of them, new Tesla customers, felt very burned by such a dramatic drop in pricing. But also this idea that we want to sell cars in the dynamic pricing model, like airline tickets or hotel rooms or concert tickets, this is not, a, I think, a great way to sell cars because consumers are sort of whiplashed with prices and consumers are sort of used to car prices being somewhat stable for a car. And, you know, I don't like this yeah. idea. By the way, I'm looking at the price changes. The first part, the handle, right, uh, for the most part, is staying the same. I mean, it, it may be $1,000 difference on the right. biggest vehicle. The Model X uh, Plaid went from, you know, now it's 108 versus 107,000. I mean, big deal. The other ones were in the same range. You're talking dollars, right. less than $500 right. difference. It almost seems kooky to go back and forth like that. And, and it does squeeze margins when he does that. I mean, you almost wonder why he did it in the first place. Uh, whatever. Correct. Anyhow, I mean, when you think about, yeah, I mean, you really have to wonder why he did it in the first place because, I mean, it's very much my understanding from speaking with you and so many analysts that Tesla is still the front runner. Um, you have other competitors. You could say Ford and GM. You could say BYD. You could say Volkswagen and whatever other company that's like the up and comer or the Chinese competitors. But they're just not pumping out the vehicles in the same way. So does right. Tesla hold the leading spot, especially because they're making batteries and it, it just seems like they are the front runner for some extended period now going forward. Yeah. And, and like a, a lot of businesses like that have the dominant position that Tesla has, which I compare to Apple, maintain margins no matter what. And, you know, everybody, when Apple raised prices on the phones over a thousand dollars, a lot of people thought they wouldn't pay for this, you know. But what we do is we see new phones every year for $1,000, and they're not that different, but it's a new phone every year, and that's what Tesla needs to do with their cars as well, but they need to maintain a margin and say 20% auto margins is where we're stopping no matter what, and if we can't sell the car at this margin, then that's just too bad, you know, and now they're using other methods to 
create demand. See, before Tesla was always able to fulfill demand because the supply demand imbalance was so much. But now with competitors and Tesla's volume so high that they actually need to create demand. And I think that's still a reality that Tesla is like grappling with. And they did a couple things this week, which I think are great. And but you can't keep changing the price of a car constantly. Set the margin in at 20 percent and lower the prices if your costs dramatically in decline. But other than that, it, it just seems like a very confusing pricing system. Yeah, I mean, it just seems wild that he went back and forth. So the Cybertruck, um, do you have a date when that's coming out, when we should expect <laughs> to see that with our eyes? Well, they said this year, so my guess is 11.59 on New Year's Eve, we're going to see the Cybertruck, you know. Yeah, okay. But, well, um, we'll see about that. I mean, Rivian came out. Yeah. There, There's a lot of excitement pertaining to Rivian's pickup truck. People yes. like it a lot. But, I mean, on yes. the scale of it, it's, it's you know, minutia versus Tesla. I mean, they're talking about, what, well, 50,000 units for Rivian by the end of the year, something like that, right? Do they yeah, need that? Yeah, it is. And it is a niche market because the car does price, let's say, 90, 100,000 or above. So they're really focusing on the mass affluent or higher end consumer, which Tesla is sort of seeding now, focusing on the mid and lower end EV mass sales. Um, that said, R Rivian is the most sought after EV here in Los Angeles now. It is not a Tesla. Teslas are everywhere. And they're almost like looking at Fords now. So so a lot of people are are really liking the Rivians because they're seeing them on the road. They're Wait beautiful cars. Second. Did you just say it is the most sought after vehicle, not a Tesla? It's a in LA. that everybody in LA. wants. Yeah, uh, well, they want this is this now. is a game changer now. This is a game changer. Well, That's a game changer. Everybody has a Tesla. There's so many Teslas. You get on the road, it's every other car. So it's like you see a Rivian, and it has a buyer. Would you buy Rivian, Rivian stock here? No, we're not owners Rivian of Rivian stock? here. I, I love the company, but they're not yet at a point where I'm comfortable with their business model. So so we'll see how they do right. over the next couple of months in ramping production and lowering costs. But the brand is excellent, and I think there's, there's an opportunity in here if Rivian can get their operations correct. I mean, when you think about P.E. ratios, Tesla is like astronomical compared to all the other automakers, right? Well, it's not an automaker. I compare it to Microsoft and Apple, and okay, it's still higher right. than Microsoft, you know. So Tesla trades at 40 times earnings. Uh, Microsoft trades more like 30, and Apple at like 28, and Google's at 25. So, so Tesla does trade at a very premium multiple in the market. Yeah, but what, what is GM and Ford? trading at. I know. Okay. It's not I mean, an it's right. but I mean uh, you look at PA ratios, I'm sure it's under 20 or something, right? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're like five, you know? And so there you go. Like, there's no, okay. So there you go. Yeah. Right. Um, but these you know, are companies the like, that have serious Let issues, me ask you, this. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So um, I know you and Hatem Dieb, uh, you know, talk about these and you're both so great to come on the network, Ross. I'm so glad you're able to come on today because one of the things that we talked about in the last investor day of Tesla was um, while I was waiting to hear more about the Cybertruck, you guys were very focused on the bench um, who would be there in right. case right. Elon Musk was busy. And um, he, he did a good job of showing them the leaders, I don't know if they were successors to him. What if he announces a CEO for Tesla? I mean, he's got a CEO for Twitter now. What stops him? What, what is that, the chief twit or something? Like, they, what does he call, whatever he calls himself. I mean, are we gonna have a chief EV maker, you know, uh, for, maybe he'll step aside. I, I just don't see that. that, you know, of course anything's possible, but I saw this move with Twitter is really so that he can refocus a little bit more time on Tesla. But I think Tesla is the most consequential business that he's focused on and has the most direct impact in helping humanity um, right. with climate change being such a main issue and, and it is such a big part of his net worth and his compensation is so tied to Tesla. You know, I just don't see anybody being a better CEO for Tesla than Elon, and I don't want right. that. I want him to be CEO of Tesla. That, like, so I just, uh, I think there's just a lot of rumor in the market, yeah. but I think he isn't going anywhere, and I think that 
that's what I hope. You By know? the way, I have to give you kudos. You called it. You called it when he was going to take over Tesla. You stuck to your, I mean, t Twitter. You called it when everybody said, no, it's not going to happen. Remember, it was like the 5420. I mean, I've right. really got to dig back into my brain here because I was standing at the post. But um, you kept, you stood by it and you said, no, he plans on doing this. What he plans on doing. And he did it. He made his moves found a new CEO, which is also, you know, what you said you wanted him to do. And here he is back at right. Tesla. So uh, I don't know. Do you yeah. have a crystal globe or something? Uh, what's next? No, All right, no I'm a there. big pain in their butt. You know, I'm a big pain in their butt. And I tell them what I want, you know, and they listen yeah. to yeah. some degree, you know, right. so let, uh, I'll take well, it. We know you want him to stay. You want him to stay at Tesla. So yeah, we, I want Tesla to be wildly successful as they have been, you know. Continue to be. Ross Gerber, thank you so much. President and CEO. Thanks of for having Kawasaki me. Wealth and Investment Management. Great to see you, Ross. Thanks.